Okay, well, I have tried to do this video now several times, uh, and uh, I was unsuccessful. I did one video, and I was supposed to put it out over the weekend like I promised, but uh, what, what happened was my internet was out all weekend, so it's been horrible. So uh, anyway, I wanted to do this emergency video, make it quick, because I wanted to inform everyone out there who is struggling right now with chronic and intractable pain, who has no cure, who's been taking medications for many years now that has had it under control and is now victim to this uh, opioid crisis attack against pain patients where it is not supposed to be. We are not part of the opioid crisis. We are victims of the opioid crisis. And, but what I mean by that is that the assault that has come about to curve the opioid crisis has now rolled into effect pain patients who have an absolute medical need for this medication. They're exhausted of, of all other ways to be cured of this pain. There are no other ways. They've tried procedures of all kinds, invasive procedures that failed. We've tried non-opioid medications. We've tried all other means, therapy, whatever. And it came to the, doc to the conclusions of the doctors in the past that we are no longer uh, um, able to be cured. The only thing that can be done for us is to help to control our pain with the opioid medication. And we've been on the medications for many years, no incidences, no overdoses or anything like that. And yet we are suffering now. They're taking our medications away, reducing them dramatically to a standard that has nothing to do with us, that has to do with average everyday people who may have uh, an incident happen where they have pain for a short period of time. Maybe they have, you know, some sort of a, a wreck or something and they break a bone and for a short period of time they need to take medication, but they heal up and then they continue to take the medication when they shouldn't have to. Um, but there are some of us, of course, who have had wrecks like me who had severe injuries and who lived many years on low doses of opioid medications and it raised up of course due to tolerance over the years but uh, have never had incidents of o overdose or anything but our condition, my condition a a as one example has gotten worse and worse due to overuse I have been in this condition for 32 years and added things have happened since then uh, due to my injuries and so I have a body that's completely torn apart, uh, arthritic, bursitis, tendonitis, root nerve impingement, degenerative disc, scoliosis, infused pelvic with my spine, uh, I have an amputated leg and I have uh, a plate and a bolt in it because I'm missing two inches of femur and the rest of the stump. Uh, I have a crooked pelvic. I had a crushed hand, so now I have uh, neuropathy at the wrist and I have arthritis in my hands. Uh, many other things. I have uh, torn, torn ligaments and things and strained um, muscles and tears and all kinds of things. And all means to try to fix these things have failed. And so they basically have told me there's nothing else that can be done for me. There's no procedures for me. There's nothing. So um, actually, what's, uh, what's going on now, I know I'm trying to make this quick, but, but there are people out there like me who are in chronic and intractable pain for life. We will not have... Uh, any other means of relief or quality of life without our opioid medications. And 
these people are being affected and and uh, having their medications taken away or reduced to a point where it's not helping pain anymore and it's causing people to not even want to live anymore the pain is so intense they don't want to live anymore which is terrible many have committed suicide the suicide rate has gone up since this started and it's not even touching uh, that this the attack that's happening isn't even touching where it's supposed to be touching which is the true addicts the heroin addicts the people who are overdosing on heroin and methadone getting illegal street drugs stealing prescription medications out of the medicine cabinets things like that people who shouldn't be taking them and this is still going on in the world there has not been a huge reduction whatsoever of these uh, these cases. There is still a major crisis going on, and the only thing that it's done is taken away medications from people who truly need it, like a diabetic would need insulin. And so we have to fight for our right to have a quality of life and to get our medications back. So what I'm doing this video for is because the FDA is having a meeting. Now many people say that it's about just cannabis, medical cannabis and whatnot, but it's not. Um, now some of you may, uh, may use medical cannabis and it may work on your pain, but uh, people who have severe chronic intractable pain from things like what I have, uh, we, the cannabis doesn't take the pain away. Um, all that does is give you a, a high of some kind and make you tired and hungry and uh, it, it doesn't help the pain. Uh, and now it helps the nausea. I do get nausea, so it does help that, but it does not help my pain. My pain is so severe that that doesn't help it. Uh, the only thing that we found that does help my pain and other people like me's pain is the opioid medication. Opioids, opiates uh, are the only way to reduce the pain and to give a quality of life that I deserve as a human being and they deserve as human beings and you guys know that. So the FDA is now opening a door and, uh, and allowing for pain patients only to speak up and to make their statements on how all this is affecting them and what they can do to find a happy medium. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the comments uh, the actual link to the page where the FDA has talked about it and to the meeting itself. Now many of us can't get out of bed and can't go to these things and we're not in that state. If you can go and you're close by, even if it, it kills you to get out, I know it does, try to get out and go to the meeting, but if you have to register to get there first. Make sure you can get your statement in and speak. Those of us who cannot make it in there, though, they're allowing for us to um, make our, our statements digitally. We can send in uh, a digital statement, uh, write them in, uh, I guess, on the internet, or uh, there are other ways uh, apparently to to do that if you can have I know most of us can't use our hands to write letters but um, if you can have a neighbor to help you or a friend and and you can dictate to them and ha write a letter but we've got to get these letters and things in before the deadline now I know that the uh, meeting is July the 9th or the 7th I can't remember you'll have to look at the the thing in the link but um, this meeting is coming up, and this is the only chance, one of the only chances we're going to get to speak up. We have to tell the truth about everything, how it's affected us, what our lives are like, what, what we need them to do to make sure that doctors are not freaking out and afraid and reducing our medications, that we don't have any other options. Palliative care is not even available to most of us, even though we are bedbound or housebound and can't leave because it hurts too much to do anything, to go anywhere. We about died just going to the store to get our groceries once a month with a caregiver, and it takes days to recover from that. 
uh, we can't do anything. We have no quality of life. So we need to explain this to them. Let them know everything. Let them know how bad the chronic and intractable pain is, how it affects our everyday lives, how us as normal people with disabilities, these are disabilities and valid disabilities, are not being treated with valid medication that we should be treated with and to let them know that this is not right, it's unfair. We are not part of the opioid crisis. We are chronic and intractable pain patients who are being affected by the attack to stop and curb the opioid crisis, but we're not a part of the opioid crisis, so we should not be affected by it. So taking our medications away is actually criminal, and it's wrong, and it needs to be changed. So hopefully we can get our point across, and the FDA will see that uh, we need to get this medication um, issue uh, put to a put to a rest for us so that we can go to our doctors and our doctors do not fear prescribing the amount and dosage we need to live an everyday life with some sort of quality before we all die before everyone gives up and ends it all because that's what's happening the suicide rate has gone up people and this is sad people are giving up they're in so much pain, they don't want to live anymore. It's not that they're depressed because life stinks or they have a mental problem or any of that. They are just so done with the pain, it's so torturous all the time that they don't want to live anymore. They can't do it anymore. And they're giving up and they're committing suicide. And this, America, is wrong. So let's get our letters and statements in. Let's be heard. They need to know what works, what doesn't work, how our lives are affected every day, what it's like to be in torturous pain, because they don't know. They have no idea what it's truly like, and they won't know until we explain it to them. Now let's be smart about this, and let's not go in just attack mode. They're opening the doors to us to, to hear us out. So we need to let them know and, and come at them in a manner of ex explaining, explanation, letting them know. And hopefully they will see what's going on and make the changes necessary so that chronic and intractable pain patients who have no other means of pain relief can get their medications back. And the doctors don't fear prescribing anymore. So that is what this video is about. The links are going to be in the description. Please, please, please uh, feel free to get involved. If you don't get involved, you might as well just give up. I don't know what else to tell you. You're, you're not going to get the help you need without fighting for it and educating them. They need to be educated because there are no studies on chronic and intractable pain patients. They have done no studies whatsoever at the CDC or Health and Human Services or anywhere else on people who are on lifelong medications to keep us functioning. And that is it. They, they only have the statistics on people who have abused them who've gotten them off the streets, who are heroin addicts, and things like that. They do not have any statistics or data on chronic and intractable pain patients who have been taking this medication for many years without incident. And now it's time for us to speak up and let them know what, this, what we were like when we had our medications what it's like now that we don't have our medications and um, how it's affected our lives and really that you know they need to fix this so let's do that I'm, I'm going to stop now this has been too long uh, it was just a quick video to update everyone please 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 check this meeting out get a call if you have to whatever get the information you need to make sure your statement gets in to this meeting and be heard 
so that we can hopefully make some change. Let them know if cannabis does not work for you, let them know that it doesn't work for you. Cannabis isn't the only answer. Cannabis is an answer for many, yes, and that's wonderful. Cannabis is an answer for me for my nausea. I have a chronic case of esophagitis that, and a faulty valve that causes terrible nausea and vomiting. It does help for that, but it does not help my pain. It does not, and that's just a fact. So for me, the, the medical cannabis is not the answer for chronic intractable pain. So if it is the answer for you, fine. If it's not, you have to let them know that. Let them know what it works for and what it doesn't work for. Let them know what it is that we need to live quality of life, to have any quality of life, to live every day. Let them know how it is for you. And that's it. So God bless everyone. And I pray that you all can get your statements heard. And um, let's all pray together. Uh, and and pray that this all comes to an end soon. Nothing comes easy, I know, and it should, but it doesn't. We all are going to have to fight and be heard. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. They are not going to change anything unless we let them know and we scream it out. And I know that it's hard for most of us. We can't do this. It's too hard. But we have to if we ever want to be relief again relieved from our pain and get out and have any kind of life again we have to fight for this so this is your time go to the link get involved and i will make another video soon god bless you all and god bless america bye guys